Hey everyone, Kyle Bascom here. Today we are going to be replacing the rear brakes on this 2012 ML550. The procedure that we go through today is applicable to just about any ML, GL, GLE, or GLS model uh, from model year about 2012 to 2019, depending on the model. Some of the reasons why you may need to replace your rear brakes include a degradation in braking performance, uh, like a change in brake bite or a longer brake pedal. Um, you might have grinding noises from your brake system. Maybe you're noticing irregular wear on your brake rotors, or you've exceeded the service light of your brake pads and you've got the indicator light on your instrument cluster. So now that you know what we'll be doing today, let's talk about the tools needed to complete the job. To get the wheel off, some of these vehicles might be equipped with a flower style head for the lug. So make sure you have the correct socket. This one is uh, made by CTA. And then in terms of removing the rotor, we've got the T30 for the set screw. We've got the 18 millimeter socket for the carrier bolts. Um, and then you're going to want a pad spreader and of course a light. Now that you know what tools are required to complete the job, we're gonna go over to the vehicle and get started. All right, so to replace the rear brakes on these vehicles, it is important to keep in mind that they have an electronic rear parking brake. Uh, that parking brake needs to be in the fitting position or needs to be retracted in order for you to retract the piston in the caliper. And you do all of that from up here. So uh, step one, make sure all the doors are closed, make sure there are no error messages on the dash, and make sure that you are on the screen that shows the mileage of the vehicle. Uh, one finger is going to be on the answer button, the other is going to be on OK, like this. Hold it down for a couple of seconds. Uh, in terms of the key position, this is in position one, not position two that you would use to start the car. And you're going to go to the menu labeled pad replacement. So I'm scrolling down, I'm hitting OK. I'm going to hit OK, it's going to move it to the fitting position. So if you were listening closely, um, you would have heard the motors for the electronic parking brake retracting. Uh, one thing to keep in mind. If your parking brake is activated, you are going to get an error message when you attempt to do this. So if it says something like the condition has not been met to complete this action, something along those lines, just retract your electronic parking brake and then try again. So uh, we've got the flashing parking brake symbol on the cluster. We are ready to service the vehicle. All right. So we are in the rear of this uh, 2012 ML550. Um, we're going to get started by removing the set screw for the brake rotor uh, just so that this doesn't move around. Um, as a counter hold, I'm just sticking this thin profile screwdriver in the vented portion of the rotor. And then uh, we're going to break this T30 free. Oof. Very tight. You don't have to use a long T30 like I'm using here. This is just what we had laying around. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is remove the wear sensor. There we are. Now I'm just going to move the body of the caliper forward slightly to retract the piston ever so slightly. There we are. And that'll just help me to move the caliper body around and get it off the, uh, the bracket when the time comes. All right, next thing I'm going to do, I've got these two uh, screws retaining the caliper body to the bracket. We're going to break those free. So um, if you have a thin profile, uh, like a 15 millimeter, you can get it along the head here as your counter hold. Uh, I don't have one. So I'm using a locking plier around the wider portion. Slight pressure. That'll hold things in place. Allow me to get that screw free. These screws, uh, they are encapsulated, as you can see here, with the, the, the thread locker. Uh, when you purchase a set of brake pads, does include new hardware, you're definitely going to want to use it. Now, in addition to uh, the 13 millimeter head, as you can see, I believe this is a T, uh, like a 45 or a 47, you could also use that um, to remove the screw. All right, going to do the same thing up top. All right, so in general, the pressure of the 
Um, electronic parking brake assembly still being connected, uh, as well as the brake hose will prevent the caliper from kind of just dropping on you. However, we really want to secure this and kind of bungee it uh, and get it away from everything because when we're trying to remove the rotor and we kind of apply force and start hitting things, this caliper is going to go flying. So we're going to move this up and out of the way as much as we can. One thing to also note, don't pry on this, don't put any pressure on this. Um, if you break it, and you need a replacement, they don't sell it. You're not going to be able to find it. When I say this, I'm referring to this cosmetic cover that is on the front of uh, these calipers. One end of the bungee is in the inspection window of the caliper. The other end, I've just got on the tow link just to kind of keep things from falling. Now we're going to remove the pads. This one slid out with not much trouble. As you can see, it's practically at end of life. This one's probably going to fight me a little. There we are. It's gone. All right, and now we've got two 18 millimeter bolts retaining uh, this caliper bracket. So we'll take that off next. All right, so uh, just as an aside, when it comes to these sliding pins, um, pin goes into this caliper board. It's filled with grease. Make sure that these pins are moving uh, freely without much pressure. That'll let you know that you're not going to end up with irregular wear, especially on the inboard pad. If you can't move it freely, pop that pin all the way out, clean it up, re-grease it, put it back in, and then you're good to go. So this bolt that I'm attempting to remove right now, uh, 18 millimeters on that head, I'm using a, one of our ratcheting wrenches. So on these caliper brackets, uh, when you purchase the pads from us, they do contain um, these new hardware sliding bracket pieces. So you're not going to be cleaning this up. You'll actually be physically removing them from the bracket. If you've got heavy corrosion, obviously clean it up first. Um, and then you're just popping on the replacement. That's all there is to it. All right, so now uh, we're gonna use a little force with my friend here to remove the rear brake rotor. I am using the wheel hanger that's part of the uh, spare tire service kit, so it's gonna be in your trunk. If this thing's missing, lost, took a walk, whatever, just use the lug bolts that you have. We're, we're simply trying to prevent the rotor from flying off. So I'm gonna give it a couple of firm hits. All right, and that just slides right out. All right, gonna get this surface cleaned up. We'll throw some anti seize on there to help the next guy out, and then we'll start putting things back together. I am going to wipe off the excess, particularly where you have the lug holes. Don't need to go too crazy on this step. All right, and now we are ready to install the new brake rotor. All right, so at the beginning of the video, we showed you the stock brake rotor. Um, which has a solid face and if you're familiar with these vehicles and the sport package vehicles you know that the front discs are cross drilled so what we're actually going to go ahead and install on this vehicle um, is the cross drilled what I like to call the cross drilled upgrade this is simply the rotor from the 2012 uh, ML550 models so 2012 only um, they were cross drilled front and rear and you can retrofit this option for any application that uses a 330 millimeter rear uh, that has a vented rotor. So anything 13 to 18 or 19, depending on the model. So uh, it is a plug and play upgrade. I'm just gonna go ahead and fit it now. I'm just gonna screw that in. There we are. And as I probably mentioned already, this is just the pin from the emergency uh, spare tire kit, just so that the rotor doesn't come at me while I'm trying to set it. Um, if you don't have this, just use one of the lugs that you have and thread it in. All right, now that that's in, I'm just gonna snug it down. There we are, so that's a T30 uh, for this guy right here. It's nice and snug. Now we can work on getting the 
bracket back on the vehicle. All right, so we're just refitting the caliper bracket. Super simple. Just tacking these guys in. The final torque when we go to snug it down is 55 Newton meters. So grabbed a, a slimmer 3 8 drive torque wrench uh, and a very shallow 18 millimeter socket so I can torque the bottom fastener. Here we are. So uh, fitting the pads now, you'll notice the outboard, um, sorry, inboard and outboard pads are different. Um, the one thing you want to look out for if they're shaped identically, which will happen on some brands like uh, Techstar, for instance, these two pins, look for the location of the pins. Um, the ones that are closer together, that's going to be fitted outboard. There we are. So just to show you, this is the inboard pad that takes the wear sensor. Not sure if you can see it on camera, but um, sliding that in. There we are. That's clipped in. And then we're just going to install it similarly to what we did with the other side, with the other pad. There we are. Removing the bungee on the caliper going to slip the lead for the wear sensor through the, um, the inspection hole for the caliper. If it gives you a lot of trouble to refit, this wasn't too bad, but if it gives you a lot of trouble to refit, simply means that the piston uh, needs to be retracted further into the caliper. So now I'm just plugging my wear sensor lead in. All right, next thing we're going to do is fasten the caliper back to the caliper bracket. Um, you always want to be using uh, replacement bolts in the pad kit. Uh, they do include four replacement bolts. Um, they are encapsulated, you can see with that thread locker. So it's important to use fresh bolts. Lastly, if the heads are damaged from removing and, and reinstalling a couple of times, um, you're going to end up with that one time that you go to take it off and you're just going to round the head. So it is best to use new fasteners in this position. And these are a 13 millimeter. So what I'm doing is I'm holding this portion of the pin so everything doesn't spin together. And then once it's snugged down, it'll allow you to tighten it without rotating everything. So that's all set. Pads are in, calipers back in, rotors back in. Rotor spins freely. If you, like I mentioned earlier, if you install the outboard pad in the wrong position, um, this rotor won't spin freely. Uh, and if you drive the vehicle, you'll end up dragging the brakes and, and overheating everything. So just keep that in mind. Otherwise, as you can tell, um, fairly simple installation. All right, last step, we're gonna throw the wheel on the vehicle. Uh, we've got new flower lugs here. If you notice your lugs are damaged, dented, creased, whatever, from using the wrong tool, uh, we do offer these on the website, just grab a set. Our kit includes the correct socket also. So I started it, threading it by hand, throwing it on a gun on the lowest setting. This is setting number one. I'm just gonna use a star pattern to walk it on. And then we'll do the final torque on the ground. And then anything uh, 105 to 110 foot-pounds is going to be sufficient. And that's it. If you remember at the beginning of the video, we needed to set the vehicle in um, the brake pad fitting position, as it's called, so that we can install the rear brakes. Now we're going to come out of that mode in order to do so, put, putting the key in the ignition. I'm going to key position one clear any messages that are in the cluster. So in this case, it's telling me the park lamp is out, so I'm gonna hit okay. It's now asking me to exit the fitting position in order to do that, I'm simply gonna hit okay. And just listen for the rear uh, brake caliper motors to retract. All right, not to retract, but to extend. So they've extended, 
the car is letting me know that it has been exited, the fitting position has been exited. I'm gonna hit okay, and that's it. You're all set. All right, guys, so we just wrapped on the rear brake job on this 2013 ML550. As far as brake jobs go, relatively simple. One thing to note, if you do have that flower style lug, like I pointed out earlier, make sure you're using the correct socket. We do offer it on the website. If you have any questions at all about what you've seen today, be sure to leave it in the comments below, and we'd love for you to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.